Let's learn about staging data for loading. So what is a stage? A stage or staging area is a place we put things temporarily with the intention to later move them to a more stable, longer term location. To clarify the concept, let's compare stages in the real world with stages in old school data warehouses. Then we'll look at stages or staging objects as they exist and are used in Snowflake. The concept of stages comes from real world warehouses. In this illustration of a warehouse, we can see two loading bays. These are the places with doors that trucks back up to for loading or unloading goods. Notice that each loading bay has an area of the floor that's marked with a yellow rectangle painted there on the floor. Anything placed into the staging area of a loading bay is there because it's about to be loaded into a truck or it's in the process of being unloaded from a truck and it's going to end up on the shelves. In other words, these yellow marked staging areas are places where goods are put temporarily before they're moved onto the shelves for storage or onto a truck for transit to some other location. In old school data warehouses, staging databases often played a similar role. So imagine a grocery store. The store is selling groceries all day and the transactions database is tracking every purchase and all the different items being purchased. The managers want to do reporting and analytics on the transaction data. So they set up a reporting database and they plan to pump data from the transaction database over to the reporting database. In many old school data warehouses, the structure of the tables and maybe the relationships between the tables might be very different in the transactions database than they're supposed to be in the reporting database. So in order to transition the data effectively, it made sense to first move the data into a middle ground. So you might make a copy of transactions, move it into a staging database and call it raw. Then you might summarize the data or move it into a different table structure and call it staged. Then in the final step, you'd pick up the data from the staging database, staging tables, and load it into the reporting database. So again, a temporary place you'd put things as you were moving them from one stable location to another stable location. So now we can talk about what stages are in Snowflake. Not surprisingly, they are not painted yellow rectangles on the floor. They are also not entire on-premise databases set aside for data to move in and out of on its way to another location. Instead, Snowflake stages are more like cloud folders or directories where you place files so that Snowflake services can pick them up and pull them into database structures quickly and securely. If you have experience with FTP, File Transfer Protocol, Snowflake stages will remind you a lot of how we used to move files around with FTP processes. Snowflake has two types of stages. There are internal stages, which act almost like directories inside a Snowflake account's local storage. There are also external stages, and these stages act more like a secure gateway between cloud storage services and Snowflake services. When we say cloud storage services, we mean the big three, Amazon S3, Google Cloud Platform, and Azure Blob Storage directories. If you're planning to create an external stage, you will need a cloud services account. External stages can be based on any of the three cloud storage platforms supported by Snowflake. They all interact with Snowflake services in roughly the same way. And Snowflake's online documentation includes detailed instructions for each of these three providers. For simplicity, we'll use Amazon three buckets for the remainder of this discussion and for the lab. So creating an external stage based on AWS cloud services will require that you have three things. You'll need a cloud storage location, such as an S3 bucket. You'll need cloud storage access credentials, so AWS IAM user and policy. And you'll need to define a stage object in Snowflake that contains references to those first two things. Take a moment now to pause and reflect on the bullet points that you see on the screen. When you're sure that you can complete the task listed here, you can move on to the next step.